Yes, I know you want me. It's laughably obvious. When I come into the room, you lick your lips and gyrate your hips like some awkward, besotted Elvis impressionist, which doesn't work for you when you forfeit your swagger, charm, and charisma. The horny, desperate gestalt is unmistakable. You want me, and I'm not mad about it. Attraction isn't a choice. We don't have much conscious control over who gets us crushed out and hot in the crotch. Usually it's someone German engineered to make us miserable, and I am, it must be said, devastatingly sexy. Maybe it's my penetrating eye contact or my soulful wounded brown peepers or my hypnotic and sonorous voice, the wave on which my stimulating message of liberty decadence rolls in. It could be my sly and sophisticated sense of humor, or the strong stillness of my deep, grounded masculine presence, or my well-honed skills as a patient and passionate lover, which are internationally known as those who experience them are doomed to run their mouths. Whatever it is, everybody wants me, and I'm reluctant to complain. The party doesn't start when I walk in, it follows me everywhere I go. There's someone for everyone, and that someone is me, because everyone wants me. Once two seductresses and femmes fatale competing for my attention both hired skywriter planes that collided midair near my home in Venice Beach. The wreckage landed on Oceanfront Walk, killing and wounding several tourists and traumatizing dozens more, but even if I wanted to, I couldn't reward either of these women with dinner and burger lords. My dance guard is full front and back, and the waiting list is an unwieldy scroll because, as I mentioned, everybody wants me. I crave solitude, it's my curse, and one of my two strongest desires. I'm a little hot for myself, too. Some things are popular because they're the best, but with all the attention and stimulation I get, I've lost touch with my desires. I'm not even sure how to properly masturbate anymore. My other strongest drive, somewhat paradoxically, is my hunger for authentic human connection. I want an Algonquin round table of my fellow witty cynics and wounded romantics, but everyone is in love with me, which makes them want to be what they think I want them to be, which isn't at all what I want. I've tried disfiguring myself, I've tried scaring people off with vulnerability and neediness, and I've tried hiding in plain sight, which works about as well as you'd think. It's a melancholy life for the modern Marlboro man, stranded alone in a crowd. Since you ask, I haven't made up my mind about you yet. I like you too much to get your hopes up or reject you outright. Our genetic imperatives make monsters and fools of us all, but we have some choice in how or whether to act on our attraction, and I prefer to deliberate and take my time deciding who's going to ruin my life.